Right, Robert, how are you going? I'm good, thanks. Okay, and just for the record, you're Robert Mast. I'm Robert Mast. From and you're, Island. you're you're from Bardo Island, and yeah. you actually carved this line of print beside you? Yes, I did. And you own the story? It's yes. part of your culture? Well, I don't actually own the story, but there's a few versions, and I, I tell one in sort of, yeah, a lot of people know about the story, but people tell it in there. So I, I, I'd say... The story comes from the island. Yeah, okay. It's just how people um, say it. So probably the right word for me to describe this is that you are a custodian of the story. Yes. All right, so you're a traditional custodian of the story. Yeah. So what's the story that goes with this painting? Well, it's called Mutuk. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll tell you the story and, and then Mutuk will come to you as in the end. Okay, yeah. <laughs> what Mutuk is. Uh, well... Motuk was a, a name of, a, well, a representative of this bloke here in the, in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, he used to be one of the best hunters and, and uh, gatherers on the island. Um, whatever he went out to get, he always succeeded. Um, but the thing that was uh, about Motuk was he didn't know how to share his catches. So, right. the, so the elders and... Um, of the island, got a bit mad with him. Um, one time he was out fishing, um, he caught a big size snapper, and um, when he was pulling it in, it came off the hook and went back in the water. So he dived after it, and he got swallowed up by this shark. He went straight into the mouth, and this shark was actually sent by the, the sorcerers and the elders who were actually mm, very mad okay. with him. Right. So anyway, he didn't die. He was in the uh, he was in the belly of the shark, and um, he was in there for about three days. And he f he felt the water go cold, so he thought, oh, we must be in deep water. And then he felt the water go warm, so he thought, oh, we must be on top of a reef. So he got his uh, mud muscle shell out and cut himself out of the shark. And when he came out, he found himself. The shark has taken him from. Badu, this this island here represents Badu, Mobiag there, Buigu. So the shark took him all the way from Badu all the way to Buigu. So he came out at Buigu, but you can't just walk into um, other islands because it's very territorial back in them days and and very like Ed Anton days. Um, so he he came out and he went and hid. And he knew that all the women went and got water in the mornings and afternoons. And his sister was married to one of the um, Buigu warriors. So he waited there until she came out. And this is the coconut um, containers we make out of coconuts to fetch, get water. And he waited there until she appeared. And then he came out and explained what, is, what has happened. And she said, no worries, I'll go and tell the elders and make sure you're welcome and all this. Uh, so she went back and told the elders that her brother was there. And they said, yeah, welcome, welcome, bring him out. So he was he was at the at Buigu for a few days. While back on Badu, they were making a death feast for him, which he called Turbawai. Um, so they thought he had passed away. Anyway, after a few days, the Buigu people brought him back on their canoe. And when they got to Badu, they just dropped him off and they went straight back to Buigu. When they were dropping him off, his wife and um, um, wife and little kid came running down to the beach to greet him. But at the same time, they told him what has happened. Um, they told him we should go back to Buigu with them because if our people see you, they're going to kill you because we already made a death feast, which is Tarabawai. He said, oh, I'll, I'll try and explain. And, and um, so when the people saw him, they chased him around the island to a point where they caught him out the back. And this is him here. Um, and that's the big club. They, they knocked him out and cut his head off. And he turned to stone on the back of the island, which we call Mutuk today. And so... Basically, the story is uh, not to be greedy. You might get turned into stone. <laughs> or you might have your head taken off. Well, 
Yeah, yeah, that too, or turned um, into stone. So yeah, a lot of these designs around it is associated with what we do or how we go fishing or how we hunt. So we got the stingray there, we got a special spear that we use for stingrays. Uh, Trevally's there, there's different spear we use for Trevally's again. Um, I've got seasons down near what happens in um, like January, uh, November, December. We have um, um, stingrays coming up because we have king ties. We have this special thorny ray, which is my totem, we call it Tukmo, that comes up and all the speed that follows with it. And um, well, this part here is this shows the mating, mating season of the turtles. This is when uh, um, uh, it's roughly about September month where the uh, birubirus we call it, they, the bee eaters, they fly over from New Guinea to Australia, which tells us it's the mating seasons for the turtles. Um, we also got uh, crayfish here and sea snakes, that's in June, July, roughly they mate and everything. And basically the cycle goes the other way really, this is going back to uh, March and all that when the um, Torres Strait pigeon starts to cross mm -hmm. the mainland to New Guinea as well and then it goes back to the cycle as well. Yeah. And uh, sorry I didn't say when they cut his head off, uh, Mutuk, Lord, I got these flying foxes here, they took off from Badu all the way up to Buigu and they circled around Buigu and his sister knew straight away that they had killed him, that's why she's crying. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And flying fox is the main totems for the Buigu people. So oh, that's the right. colonel there uh, with the flying fox on the front heading towards so, us. So just to be clear on a couple of things that you've said there, because as fascinating as that is, when you said before time, you mean pre-contact that this, this took place? Yes. So it's not something that happened a fortnight ago. No, yeah. but it's, but it, but and it's part of your traditional law. Yes, it's been passed on. Okay. That's only because of that stone on the back, which yeah. is mutu, yeah. and that's why we identify the stone. And a lot of the stones around the islands got different stories and different meanings and why are they in place and yeah, um, yeah. But it's oh, okay, just been passed down. Uh, but yeah, it's a good. I, I suppose, like, thou shalt not be greedy. <laughs> yeah, thou shalt not be greedy. Yeah, very good. No. Well, look, thanks for sharing that, Robert. That's uh, that's an amazing story. And the story is almost as amazing as the painting, which is almost as amazing as the artist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, hopefully you found that interesting today, and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Cheers, mate.